So now we have time for questions. Okay, let's start here. Thanks. Uh, it's a question for Vito. Uh, so I was a little confused about uh, two possible ways of looking at migration of individual A from or origin to destination, which is um, it can be with the same income. You can carry your income with you or you can change your income, right? You go to this other place and your income changes. Yeah. Now, from some of your theoretical description, it sounded like you were had in your mind this person with the same income. M his own. Yeah? Yes. With his own income. Now, in my mind, there couldn't be any change in global inequality if that happens, right? Because a global inequality, you, 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 there's anonymity, so you're here, now you're there, but you're the same observation in the vector. So there could be changes in within country, of course, but not in global inequality. So when you have changes in global inequality, presumably that is because, say, in your empirical exercise, you're observing the migrant with a different income. Now the same person has moved, but the income has also changed. So in some sense, there are two factors. At least on within country inequality, there is a factor of location. So you could be rich in Syria, but poor in Italy or something like that. Uh, but there's also the change in income effect. I don't know if, if you d d separate those. And in, in my mind, for the global inequality, I mean, empirically, there'll be issues around PPPs and all kinds of things messing up. But conceptually, if you observed everybody's incomes in dollars, just moving a person from one place to the other should have no effect. So all of the effect on global inequality should come from changes in incomes of the migrant, right? So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Chico. So the, the paper, doesn't have a theoretical model there. So we do the, this empirical analysis and that's the result. Then I was thinking, okay, what's the, 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 the theory from the point of view of inequality measurement? So my point was that uh, when you move uh, an individual from uh, one country to another country, you are moving a mass, okay? So uh, apart from the movement of the income, so the effect of income, you're moving a person. So the population size, is changing, and that is an effect on inequality, at least on the between countries inequality. And then there is an effect on the within country inequality. It is not clear to me what is the sign of these two effects. Of course, on the world inequality intended as an inequality in the population of the world, where there is no attached to each of us, what is nationality, nothing changed, of course unless you assume that uh, the, the income can change. But uh, in the between uh, groups, those are groups, okay? In the between groups and the within groups, the fact that the size of the groups is changing is something that affects inequality. That is why I was puzzled, puzzled and I don't have a, uh, an answer. So that, that's, uh, and, then there is a problem, yeah. and then there is a problem, of course, uh, uh, what is the income that the individual expect to have when he moves from one country to another country? And that is an empirical, uh, of course, an empirical issue. No, just a quick follow up. I mean, just again, so, so suppose we are, we are in a world where you, you, what you were thinking of, which is you take your income with you. So there's no change in income. Individual I has the same income at origin and destination. Then we know that that global inequality does not change. And therefore, the effect in between group and within group will have to add up to zero, which is what you find. So, not, exactly. not exactly, but that's probably because you are observing them with other incomes. Yeah. You're observing the empirical result. Yeah. I'm just saying, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, between the theoretical model and the empirical model. It has to add up to zero in that. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Uh, hi, uh, my question is to the natural disasters. Uh, yes, because we are having like a similar paper tomorrow in the climate session, but we are having uh, all the disasters in the um, in the paper. 
we are having like a kind of integration between the climate and disasters and the inequality and the growth. It's an integrated model. So uh, we, uh, we are having uh, like um, the number of people affected by the disaster is one of the important uh, variables that we take into consideration while we're doing this. So it's not just um, the number of um, uh, the events, the frequency, but also the intensity of this uh, event. So that's my uh, uh, suggestion. Okay, thank you. If, if, if someone was uh, raising the hand before, okay, <laughs> okay, thank you. So, so two two comments. One for Vito is if if uh, so you have like an issue of. of uh, causality from uh, inequality to migration and the other way around, yes? It's at least one, let's say, in the theoretical part. If, if, uh, if you can, let's say, if you have only one causality, then uh, you don't have an issue with, with causality in your regression. But the first question is, can you, can you control, let's say, can you deal with that issue of causality? The second is, um, different people may have different incentives for, for migrating. So you may want to check for, for heterogeneous effects, like, uh, I don't know, different uh, coefficients for different levels of income, I don't know. And, and one for, for Flaviana, I think, Maybe uh, more than, than inequality itself, um, uh, there is an issue of, of um, polarization, income polarization. If you have clear, defined groups, then you have trust issues. Uh, so, so maybe, and, and, and what you found regarding between uh, inequality may be suggesting that. So, so you may want to, to check if, if, uh, if you can use um, a measure of, of, of polarization. Um, and then uh, the other issue is uh, people, let's say trust may be related to what the government is doing for income distribution. So you may want to, to use the difference between uh, uh, pre-taxes uh, uh, inequality and after taxes inequality. Thank you. So we take a, we take a few questions and then uh, all the answers because there are many people. Yeah, uh, this is uh, in line with the uh, suggestion about polarization. I think it's a very good suggestion. Um, I was wondering a bit about um, whether the underlying theory, so you said you, you didn't just want to use the aggregate genie, you wanted to break it up into like percentile bands or something, and then you were using the genie within the band. But I think that some of the theory around around trust is is you almost need like what what's the reference group for each person along the percentile? I'm wondering, you know, like could uh, you you could think that, and I don't know what what the how you define a reference group like that. But say it was like uh, ten percent either way of any anybody at a certain percentile. You could define the Gini coefficient per percentile in that way, if that's the, if that's the theory. Because if, if you just cut it up into percentile groups, then there's a problem at the boundary. You know, how do you think about the people at the boundary? You know, the people just below are in a, in a group and the people just above are in a group but I think the theory of the trust uh, that you're trying to get to is something like a relative, you know, relative to a group around around you or something like that. So maybe that's that's something you could do. There's some issues on the boundaries, of course, when you get right down at the bottom. But if you're the poorest, you're the poorest. That's what it is. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. And you go to the other side. That. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Hi, thanks. A really interesting set of papers. Um, 
I don't want to pile on, but I also had a question for Flaviana. So I'm wondering about the role of institutional quality. I mean, if you're in a country where you don't, where the institutions don't work well, you probably shouldn't trust government. So I wonder if you, how do you take that into account in, in looking at this relationship? Thanks for a very uh, interesting set of papers. I have a question for Flaviana and one for Vito. For Flaviana, I was wondering if, so you, you show that interpersonal trust and trust in institutions are two different phenomena. And I was wondering if you can dig in more into interpersonal trust, because I wonder if there are different phenomena within that. Um, and I don't know if the World Value Service allows you to do it, but I wonder if, uh, in, trust in persons of your own group, whatever the group is, and trust in persons from outside your group are different and actually opposite phenomena where trust in institution declines, trust in people from other groups declines as well, and therefore trust in people of your group increases relatively. You see, so an increase in trust in people of your own group is not necessarily a positive phenomenon, I don't know while trusting people from other groups may be a positive phenomenon for social cohesion. I don't know if you are able to look into that or not. And, and then um, for Vito, you get a very strong effect of migration on, uh, within country inequality, and I was wondering how you got to that, because the, liter the empirical liter uh, literature I know on this is not so conclusive. Um, it's because low-income workers and migrant workers that are low-income are uh, are not necessarily competing with each other, are more complementary. And so I, I don't know, I've seen a more nuanced literature on this topic and I'm wondering how you get your result. I think that's more philosophical. Okay, maybe yeah. I should stop because <laughs> <there are> other questions. <laughs> uh, yes, I had a question for Vito Peragine as well. Uh, one could speculate that for the migrants, what is maybe more relevant than the overall distribution of the destination country is the distribution of the incomes of migrants of the same country or region in that destination country. And I had the sense that in the second part of your uh, paper, you have a way to recover those distributions, at least at a regional level, no? in, in each destination country. So I was wondering if you could like, take those, uh, that data to the first part and check whether if it matters for migration decisions, how much it matters, and how much then the aggregate distributional characteristics of the destination country matter, once including information on the particular inform distribution for the migrants, which is probably what they, where they can more realistically expect not to end. There was any other question here, no? Uh, I have uh, one uh, question for Falaviana. Yes, uh, very interesting paper. So um, I guess um, there may be um, perhaps like a, some difference between short-term inequality and long-term inequality, right? Say, for example, long-term inequality, if you look at inequality average over the past 10 years or even 15 years or so, right? Then, so I just wonder, you know, if there is any difference, you know, in the impact of short-term inequality and long-term inequality on your reasons. And also for longer-term inequality, I guess you may also, uh, you have to worry less about, you know, endogeneity issue, right? Because then it's not given. And, and for the world value survey, it's like uh, the value right now. So, so in a way, you know, it can help a bit with your problem. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. A lot of questions. <laughs> ah. I have a question for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when in the first part, in the first part of the results, when you, uh, you don't have a, a control, I think, uh, for the net of migrants in the destination country, the people. But if that is a, um, a, a big phenomenon, that may be affected the inequality in the in the destination country, and I, I'm not. It, it may be like. Um, it may be interacting with your result, but in not in contradictory ways. But yeah, the net because they may be uh, increasing the Gini in the in the destination country. Even even with that, you find your results. But I was wondering how how that may be interacting. Okay, a few minutes for you to reply. Let's start with Vito. 
Okay, so uh, let me start with the, the easy ones, which are... Um, so, uh, one question was, uh, it would be interesting to, to see, to I mean, to include uh, in the first part of the paper when we study how inequality affects the migrations, okay, to include some information on the part of the distribution where uh, migrants are expected to land after uh, the moment. And this is, part, this is uh, in, the, in, in the models. We, I didn't discuss them, but are there. Also, there you know the, the last columns of the of the of the table. We have the the average income of the forty percent, uh, the average income. The, so, yeah, that's something we do, and, it, it, and in fact, it's in the right direction. We say so. It, the results are consistent, and uh, we don't have. Uh, I mean, there are many things for which we do not control. This is a very parsimonious model, if you want, but uh, I agree that uh, that is very important. So there are different mechanisms that we, uh, can be behind, uh, you know, and uh, yeah. So now uh, on the reverse causality, you know, I'd like to say that uh, the, the second part of our paper is an answer to the problem of reverse causality in the first part, but in fact, it is not the right answer because in the last part of the paper, what we have is. Uh, that uh, the global inequality doesn't change, but th there is a positive effect of migration on inequality within countries. And that is exactly the, the, the kind of inequality for which we test in the first part. So, yeah, I'm afraid to say that, uh, I mean, uh, 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 you know, that model, which is a, a panel fixed effect model, uh, maybe, 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 you know, uh, in a sense, uh, you know, at, I mean, it's, it's sensible to this criticism. And, uh, and the second part, uh, if I understand well, in which we show that in fact uh, mig mig migration increases the inequality within countries, uh, in, in, you know, in a sense, uh, gives uh, significant to this, to, this, to this problem. And uh, we don't have a decomposition for skills, if that was the, 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 the question for skills and heterogeneity. Uh, although that has been very discussed, uh, very much discussed in the lecture show. We, if, I don't know if that was the question. Taking into account the heterogeneity of the migrants to see, so not, not only the income, uh, so the position income distribution, but also some other characteristics. That we don't do that. I mean, that is very well discussed in the lecture show. So we just focus on, uh, you know, on the income of the, of the, of the origin. And we, we, you know, we obtain it in the, in the second part of the country. We don't, we don't uh, uh, control for that. And there is another question. Uh, the effect of migration on the inequality within, you know, how, how is it that we have this strong effect? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we should discuss in detail what the way we, we construct, uh, what was the, your question? The way we constructed the counterfactual distribution. Because, the, you know, that result comes from co co comparing the actual distribution with the distribution without uh, migration. It might be, you know, that the way in which this uh, contract distribution is constructed, and we, we can discuss later because, uh, uh, you know, may bring th those strong results. It may be possible. But that is the, basically the driver of that, uh, that strong result, yes. I'll stop here. Okay, so thank you for all uh, these questions and suggestions. Um, I start with the polarization issue. Yes, we will check and uh, add some polarization measure. In fact, the, the results about the between inequality component is maybe suggesting that there is an issue of polarization. But still, I just want to underline that uh, the uh, final result of the impact of aggregate inequality on institutional trust is driven actually by the within uh, inequality component. So still, the profile of inequality matters. is just uh, not only polarization, but for sure we will add uh, a section by considering polarization. Uh, difference between pre-tax and post-tax? Yes, Carlos, I don't remember if the database has also information on... Uh, no, pre-tax is only post-tax, so maybe we, have, we will explore other uh, databases that provide uh, pre-tax distribution. Uh, 
institutional quality, yes, at a certain time, I remember that we had the control and then we decided to leave it out because I think we were losing too many information. But uh, I will check it again. Um, interpersonal trust, no, we didn't go into detail of, because uh, our focus was institutional trust, but uh, for sure there is something to, uh, to, to look uh, and to, to, to be said about this, about uh, the trend of both internet, interpersonal and in institutional trust. And a uh, similar story for short term and long term inequality, we didn't check the difference between the two, so we just we are just considering uh, unitemporal inequality and just uh, so it's short term inequality and we will uh, we will also consider uh, consider adding uh, and looking at what happened when we also had uh, long term inequality. Then there was a question about uh, the boundary. I'm not sure I understood when what you were referring to, but the way in which we are computing this profile is we are dividing the distribution into three parts. So we compute this within inequality in the bottom 40%, then between the 41 and the 80%, and then 80, 100%. And we take then the between, between, between inequality be within this group. So I'm not sure I, I got your uh, question about uh, boundary, but maybe we can discuss uh, yeah, after that. So I think uh, that's it, okay. So the comment on number of people affected by the natural disaster, I think that's a really good comment. I do not have data on that, but I think indirectly I'm able to look into that by uh, constructing percentiles of fire utility power. So to the extent that higher percentiles reflect higher intensity of the disaster, right? So that might be one way to indirectly uh, you know, tease out the channel that you're talking about, but that's a really good suggestion. I'll certainly look into that. Thank you. Okay, uh, any last, very last question or comment or reaction? I think Veronica is having it too easy, so I have a question for Veronica. Uh, this economic complexity thing, I don't know, maybe I missed it. Did you have a, a theory or a hypothesis for mechanisms? For example, I was thinking that, suppose you think of increasing economic complexity in a Kuznetsian way, you know, there's more activities, maybe higher income in some of them, maybe you'd expect the market side of things to make inequality greater. I could think of counter arguments as well, but let's say, but then, but then, you know, there's demand for public insurance and countries develop welfare states. And as they are more economically complex, uh, actually, perhaps the market income wouldn't change very much, but they have developed these mechanisms. So, and is that something that that was in your uh, model at all, or in, or in your empirics at all? No, the the basic idea for the uh, complexity index, the the idea for the complexity index is like we can think a, a, like a proxy of technology incorporation, because uh, basically. Uh, the, the Asian countries are the ones that uh, move forward. So, uh, what we, we uh, the, the question about the development of the of the welfare state and how that may be related. I mean, I I have not control for that, and I am just now thinking that we have, as as I said, after taxes uh, genie. So maybe there is some story, uh, like some more complex story in the in the argumentation. But my, the main message that we have up to now is that this basic idea that that making economies more complex through the incorporation of technology uh, uh, may lead to lower inequality, yes, but not for poorer countries up to a certain stage, up to you reach there. So that's like the basic, uh, the basic intuition behind the, the model. So what, what may be happening then, uh, it's like more complex, I'm not sure, but we, what we are trying to to understand is that this uh, virtue cycle technology, inequality technology or, or complexity in, in the type of production that we are doing. Also, we have some limitations because this economic complexity index is based on, exp in, on, on exports, basically. So it's, if a, it, it depends also on the type of export, not necessarily your, your production, your domestic production is reflected there in an adequate way, but it's the only kind of, of 
measure that you may have that synthesizes the concept because um, that's that's the main idea. So. Okay, so thank you very much, all the presenters.